dealt with was Milton House, was it? Yes, and later Rosebery, of course. Milton House was interesting in that half the beds were in the remit of Worthing Society for the Blind and the other half were the County Council. And were they separate bedrooms or were these dormitories? Um, some double bedrooms, but mainly separate. But you had to be prepared to share a bedroom on admission because the, the um, single bedrooms, you know, were allocated when people had been there some years. I think I read that um, Milton House was one of the first blind homes in the country, in I, local authority. Yes, I read that and, and I was quite, I, I didn't realise that. It was 1937, I think. Yes, I, I was quite surprised, I had no idea. So how did that relationship work between Worthing Society for the Blind and the County Council? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was interesting. Now, Worthing Society, um, do you remember, uh, what's his name? I can't remember. He was on the committee. He used to say, Worthing Society put the icing on the cake. In other words, they provided the little extras. They didn't interfere really with the social work of it. And we had social clubs and handicraft classes. For instance, we, we gave them house bulbs each year to grow. And we had a competition to see whose was the best. Uh, and I think some of the social activities they were involved in. Of course, we used to go on holiday, as you know. I remember mostly the Isle of Wight. So what would the criteria be? for getting in, yes. being blind and having nobody else to look after them. I remember Mrs Edwards telling me when I first started, whether she told me or whether I just picked it up, that you kept Worthing business to yourself and you didn't trouble the county with it. We ran our own ship in Worthing and because we had access to Worthing Society for the Blind funds, we could run quite a, quite a good ship. And Worthing Society for the Blind, what were the people like who ran it? Give us some flavour of the personalities. <laughs> oh, they were great. I enjoyed them. Ladies with flowery hats, you, you can't help saying, but they meant well. They were tended to be um, the wives of Rotarians. Um, Rotary played a strong part. Um, count, borough councillors, aldermen in those days, of course, in, in Worthing, wives, or, or actually the councillors themselves. Um, the wife of, was it the Midland Bank? It was one of the ones that closed. Um, man, the wife of the manager, I think it was of Midland Bank, Miss, Mrs. White was the treasure, was the fundraiser. Um, so these were the, the trustees, these were the volunteers? These were the volunteers. So was there a paid staff? No, no, because you see, it was Mrs. Edwards and myself who were paid by the County Council. But effectively, you were working with the Worthing Society for the Blind on a yes. day-to-day -day basis. Mm. And where, where was their headquarters in those days? Where were they based? You won't believe this. In a corner of the dining room at Milton House. <laughs> and that was how, where I learnt what life was like in residential accommodation, because you learn a lot. When your little office, it, well, it was just a desk in an alcove, is in the dining room. Uh, and what did you learn? <laughs> <laughs> you watched how people related to staff and how staff related to people and the things that were good and the things that were bad. And you could thought, you know, I could do better. Do you remember some names have come up, some personalities? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Edwards and Mrs. Cobby. 
Mrs. Cobby, yes, she was a, a Worthing Society, of course. Yes, what do you remember of her? Oh, forthright character, rather, I would say. Uh, she was also on the examining board for the home teachers, which I didn't know at the time, obviously. Uh. She was a flagship, I suppose, <laughs> if a lady can be a flagship. Um, her husband was a leading solicitor in the town, Arthur Cobby, and she became a county councillor. I think she chaired the Welfare Committee. So she was a person in a great influence in those days, and she always made sure that the blind were looked after. She had a bubbling personality. Um, if she thought a thing needed doing, she made sure that it got done. She was very attractive. Um, men loved her. And this was, this was quite important. In getting things done. In getting things done, yes. So she was a younger woman, she wasn't a retired lady. Um, no, I, it's a job to know. They all seemed old to me in those days. Well, I suppose she was in her 50s, maybe a bit younger than that. She was the chairman, but the person who did the work was Margaret Edwards. The person who supplied the ideas that Marjorie Cobby went ahead with was Margaret Edwards. And um, she taught me everything. But you see, we never called people by their Christian no, names. No, no. I mean, she came to work as, a, as the very first home teacher in the county at the outbreak of war because she was busy placing the blind evacuees which were billeted down in West Sussex. Her area was the entire county. And they, I don't know whether they gave her a bike or whether it was her own bike, but she would go out on her bike every day and put it on the car, on the train as where needed to get out to the villages. But to think of Margaret Edwards as the professional, it doesn't give you the right impression of oh, right. Margaret Edwards. If she, <laughs> her view of red tape was to go round it, under it, or, or beyond it. <laughs> Oh, we had to go to County Hall once a month for a meeting and report what we've been doing, more or less. So was West Sussex Association for the Blind part of the County Council then, effectively? Effectively. In fact, you'd have to be very clever to be able to disentangle them because um, the clerks in the health department originally and then in the welfare department when things changed were the kind of which call it case officers for West Sussex Association for the Blind. And um, they ran, kept the county register. Well, what would have been different then to today? I suspect people would be treated more as individuals these days. But, but by saying that, it would be wrong to suggest that it wasn't a very caring set up at Milton House because it was. But I don't think people were treated with the respect that they would expect today. But they didn't then. Because to them it was a step up from what the previous generation would have Yes. Had. And, um, you know, they were very pleased to be there. Very, very thankful. They were privileged. Um, I mean, the food was good. And, and that Maudie, she was a super cook. I, I can still taste her boiled beef and carrots. I mean, that was, again, typical, you know. When there was something nice on the menu, they'd say, come on, Miss Rose, come and have dinner. And so I would nip into the staff and have dinner with them and say, well, can I pay? And they'd, oh, it's not worth the paperwork. <laughs> but, I mean, we ate what the, what the residents ate, and, and it, it was good. And the... And the Blind Association, Worthing Society for the Blind, provided the social programmes so that there was a social or a handicraft class that Mrs Edwards or I ran every single Thursday. And what was the age range of the people in the home? A bit younger than they are nowadays. Um, some who were, what we would say, institutionalised, probably been in come from residential school 
into some kind of residential accommodation, never lived independently. There was always a little group like that. Um, others whose sight had failed in middle age. And not the huge, overwhelming proportion of 80, 90-year-olds who were very, very frail. Um, people just didn't live that long. Back people then, didn't. Did they? No, they didn't. Visitors to Milton House brought people living there a bunch of grapes as if they were somehow ill. Do you think there was there was the, there was that attitude still then that, that because they were blind they were somehow they needed poor. to be looked they yeah. needed to be looked after mm. and they were objects of great kindliness. Mm. So patronising, really, albeit in the best intentions. We would call it patronising. I'm not sure whether the residents would have called it patronising. Yes, some would, because, yes, you always had some who were termed bolshe. <laughs> some would, and some would have resented it. But by and large, people liked the way the bread was buttered, I suppose. And... When did the when did attitudes change towards those types of homes for blind people then? Well, it was pre it was pre community care act anyway, but of course community care really gave it a huge bolster. Um, where I mean, the principle became where if an outside body could provide the services, then the local authority had to kind of transfer the services, and. I mean, all the, all our homes. I notice now, if you if you look at the list of care homes in West Sussex, m quite a few of them are the old homes that I remember that we opened to replace the workhouses. Were well, both um, Mrs. Edwards and Mrs. Cobby there all the time that you were there? Mm. So when you left, they were still there? No. No, because um, Margaret Edwards died oh. and I just stepped in for those years between 1961 to 1964, but by which time I'd had 57, 15 years or so in blind welfare and I wanted to kind of spread my wings a bit and I switched to working with disabled people for the county. That last social I went to before I got married, the, um, the room was absolutely packed with people. And I can remember all the men singing, get her to the church on time. <laughs> and where was that? That was in the blind home. In the Milton house? Yes. Oh. <laughs> and at my wedding, they came, some of them. And then afterwards, um, my poor husband had to go down with my bouquet and kiss all the old ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a family kind of affair, as you can see. Mm. Mm. So, so from that point, when you when you um, changed career, was that the end of your um, connection with Worthing Society for the Blind? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you, you you weren't aware of its later developments or changes. Only slightly, in that. Let me see. You see, when I moved, when I got married, we moved to Haywards Heath, which was East Sussex. I was looking for a job. That's right. And the only vacancies were in, in, in home teaching in East Sussex. And so I worked for East Sussex Association for the Blind, which was, oh, grief, go back to Victoria. She would have found me quite at home. What was the difference then? Oh. Well, I suppose it was more like when I first started in Worthing, you know. It, it hadn't changed in East Sussex. Um, it's all this clay and the wheels and clay things. <laughs> this side of the county, things don't change too quickly. Never did. Um, but um, More basic facilities? Oh, I don't think there weren't many. There weren't many. <laughs> there was one blind home in, in Lewis, I remember, the Mabel Lister home. But it... Oh, I was terribly frustrated because um, we'd had what I thought was jolly good service in Worthing and lots going on. So I was pretty frustrated, and um, which was when I got involved with the BBC and I started working as a freelance for them. <laughs>